Well, Japan certainly haven't helped themselves, and uh, Sean Webb, the fly half who did takes, dictates play, is going to take some responsibility for that. But they won the restart. Always good news to win the restart. Endo, the right winger, taking it forward. Can they get it through a number of phases to find the holes within the Samoan defence? Webb to Thompson, quickly back to Tanaka. Back to Webb again, taken on by Imamura. Tanaka again to Webb, that Japanese Kiwi combination. Just wouldn't sit up for Azuki. Less than five minutes to half time. Entertaining match. We've had four tries so far three for the Samoans, one for the hosts, Japan. Well, they've got to do it all again now, Japan. It's become very slow ball at the base. Samoa being very, very competitive at the breakdown area. You can't afford to hesitate, which is what I felt that Luke Thompson did a bit there, but the referee's got in his favour. Coming from uh, in front of the back foot, as it were. Now, decision time for Japan. I would say it's kickable, but whether the confidence is there or not, I would doubt, to be honest with you. I suspect they'll go bottom left. They've got plenty of time to have the line out. Yeah, they are doing that indeed. Odd-looking kick, but um, it's, it's worked. Busy time for Japan recently, as the countdown to the World Cup ticks ever louder. Continuing the domination of the Asian Five Nations, as we were talking about earlier. They've had a 10-day training camp as well as ahead of this tournament, so plenty of time together. Unlike the Samoans, who haven't been together since last November. Their defence is being tested at the moment, and sadly for Japan, the ball was not forward as Sean Webb scampered through. Well, it's these unenforced errors that aren't helping Japan. It was pretty good ball off the line-out. It's obviously what they're going to do every line-out. Get it off the top, get it quick. The pass is catchable. It's low, obviously, but that is very, very catchable. It's, it's not in the breadbasket, as they say, but um, Ryan Nicholas will be disappointed with that. He should have caught that, no question. Just a slight break as we bear down on half time. Um, to Corey going off, it is isn't it? To Corey, isn't it? Being replaced by Filippo Levy. Narrowly avoided relegation this season with Newcastle in the English Premiership. Some change in the second row. Yes, it is to Corey, you're right. Walking for it very gingerly. It doesn't, it's not blood either, so he's not going to be able to come back on. Some of scrum half. Lua Lua. By Lua Lua. 30-year-old, been playing for Parramatta in Sydney this season. And it's picked up at the back by Tui Fua. Super 15 debut for the Chiefs a couple of months ago. So he's beginning to make a big impression. That's the Hooter. Ooh, very casual. That um, will be the last act of the half, and a little bit to ponder on for John Kerwin. A little bit of good, but the concession of the three tries will be at the top of his list of the bad. They've tried to um, to give the ball some air, Jamie, but both sides, it seems, lacking a little bit of accuracy early on in this tournament. Yeah, very much so. It's it's a hot, hot and steamy night, as you can as you can see. But uh, Japan have got to regroup very quickly. Half time, Samoa lead by 24 points to eight. The stadium, these are the highlights of the opening half on the opening weekend of the Pacific Nations Cup, and it was quite a start for the defending champions, Samoa. The break from George PC. And the score for the giant Leicester winger, Alex Tuolangi. That was within the opening couple of minutes. The alarm bells were ringing. And there was an even shriller pierce to those bells. Ten minutes later, Similar move, same man, same result. 
Alex Tuolangi with his second try, very quickly getting the disappointment of losing the Premiership final with Leicester out of his system. But somewhat soft try conceded Ryu Halani galloping over from the base of that Japanese scrum. Zach Talafo, who was in touch as he shipped the ball back inside to Joe Taroki. And the ball was kicked on by Manu Salavea, but he managed to get fingers on the ball before any Japanese defender. So their lots are in, you would have thought, for, um, for a fairly tough second half. The Samoans looking big and uncompromising, and despite the fact that they've not played since November, pretty well drilled going forward. This stadium, by the way, the Prince Chichibu Memorial Stadium, the headquarters of the Japanese Rugby Union, holds 25,000 spectators. It's not at its capacity today. But it's named after the sporting royal who loved this sport in the 1950s. Some um, Japan's Twickenham or Eden Park or Ellis Park or any other stadium around the world that you care to mention it. Has very special connotations for all Japanese rugby followers and they're hoping that it brings them some fortune over the next 40 minutes and they might need it against this uncompromising lot, James. Well, it's slightly ironic. A lot of people thought that this year's Rugby World Cup should have gone to Japan. And when you think that poor old Japan and indeed New Zealand have suffered horrendously with, with um, you know, the earthquake and the tsunami, it, it's, um, it's great that there is one game here in Japan, which is, which is important, I think, for everybody. And uh, it's important for Japan, they bounce back in the second half because it's a, it's a bit of a gap. 16 points and uh, they need to score first they need to come out firing and they need to stop any self-enforced errors they need to make Samoa work really really hard it's a bit easy at the moment for Samoa to get the ball back because of these these unenforced errors so they've got to make Samoa work a lot harder to get field position to get the ball and keep the ball for longer periods Japan need to get in the bottom third of the Samoa and defence and they need to stay there they need to go through the phases and have confidence in their abilities to keep the ball, retain possession and ask bigger questions of the Samoa and defence Samoa and 10 Tusi PC just confirming things with Keith Brown, Samoa able to um, select from strength they've been allowed to draw on the power and experience of all of their overseas players for once so much so that just 3 of the 28 man squad are based at home so many familiar names in their lineup. But it's one of the newer ones, James Soyalu, the fullback on his debut. Younger brother of Stephen Rodney, who's caught our attention early on. No early tries for him yet, but his kicking has been sublime. Part of the reason that it's the Samoans who live by, lead by 24 points to 11. As PC gets us back underway, and Dan Leo was right in there with the red scrum cap on, busying himself, but Japan have somehow managed to win that kickoff, flinging it rather aimlessly though in midfield and George PC, Tusi's brother, made a bit of a nuisance of himself and made sure that the ball came back on the blue side but then in the mayhem it was knocked forward and Japan will have the scrum. We were just mentioning about unenforced errors weren't we and I, I suspect John Cohen, knowing him as I do, also probably mentioned it in his half-time team talk but it was, it was an ambitious move from Japan, a wide pass from Sean Webb, the fly half didn't go anywhere near to hand, but uh, fortunately for Japan, somehow knocked it on. This is the sort of area where Sean Webb needs to take control, the fly half for Japan. Is there any point playing pretty foot rugby down this end? I suspect not at this at this stage of proceedings. The scrum's holding its own ish, it's come out nicely. Precisely what you were saying. Sean Webb doesn't mess around. It's um, it's not a particularly good kick, though. It probably needs to be said. It was picked up comfortably by Salosi Tangi Thakimbao. Taken on by Tui Fua. Striding over halfway. Playing today ahead of George Stowers, who is part of Samoa's wider squad for this Pacific Nations Cup. And Japan in their desperation to hang on the ball. But, um, getting out of the tackle situation quick enough for the liking of our New Zealand referee, Keith Brown. Yeah, Luke Thompson, the guilty party, made no effort whatsoever to get away from that ruck situation to enable Samoa to get the ball. 
And you mentioned the kick wasn't great from Sean Wobbett. It wasn't, but the, but the the chase was even poorer, to be honest with you. You can make a very average kick into a pretty good one. The first tackle was missed as well. This is the, the replay of the number eight, Tui Fua, who is an enormous man and very hard to bring down. That wasn't where the penalty uh, was given, but he, he looks a good find. He's not a bad number two to Stowers, if indeed Stowers is still number one. Yeah, the coach, Fui Monosu, uh, Fuamana Tafua certainly has um, has some very good selection issues ahead of the World Cup. The strongest nation in the Pacific at the moment, although the rankings, the world rankings, will tell you that actually Fiji are a, a place or two higher. But let's have another look at James Soyalu from distance. First half impressions were very good ones off the kicking team. Result. The direction was um, was slightly awry, but he, nothing wrong with the distance. Nothing wrong with the distance. Very nearly a knock-on in goal too from uh, Sean Webb, who's not had the best start to this this second half. Wild pass to his left, pretty average kick, and almost not forward a penalty kick attempt. Let's see if his uh, dropouts are any better. Oh, it had plenty of height on it. As hard as um, Toshi Zumi Kitagawa tried, couldn't um, win it back on his own. But because of the crossing and the obstruction, Japan will have the penalty anyway. Well, it's not got any better for our friend at fly half. He's missed touch and Tangi Thakambao and these Samoan backs are not shy at running it from anywhere. This is Tuolangi. Oh. Tipped up unceremoniously by Nishihara, one of those making his debut today, the 23-year-old at open side for Japan. Ooh, taken in. I think that was taken in, the 22. They should go back. Japan get away with one, really. Samoa can run it out of defence, but you've got a chap like Tuolangi. <laughs> He's a go-to man, isn't he, anywhere on the field? So it wasn't uh, his fault. He kept hold of the ball, but that kick has given Japan a, a really good... An unexpected opportunity here. Let's see if they still go off the top. First half, they went off the top line-out ball all the time. Let's see if they repeat that tactic or try and do a catch and drive. Aoki's taking an age to get it in, and that's why they weren't confident at all and they've lost it. A little bit of confusion, and it was um, snatched away from them by Ezra Taylor. The Connex blind side, but again, the ball was not forward. Samoa might take that, though. They were making life very difficult for Japan and their hooker, Yusuke Aoki. Well, he's, except that he's given a Samoa knock, and, um, knock on. So it's still Japan's ball. Yeah. So let's see if their scrum set piece can can beat their line-out one, as it were. It wasn't a very good... Uh, it, looked, it, it looked troublesome for the moment that Aoki had no idea where he was going to throw it for a long, long time. You should know in the opposition 22 exactly what your options are from from scrum and line out from the set piece area. This time it's Tanaka, the scrum half, who's got to get this right. Webb is standing a long way away. Look how far Webb is standing away from the scrum situation. That's a that's a big pass. You'd have to kick uh, it, Jamie, to get that far. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now the other backs are standing deep and wide. Let's see if um, Fumiaka Tanaka has that pass he's not needed because it's taken off the back by Ryu Hilani it was a decent scrum from Japan in the end they'd taken Samoa's back row out of the occasion momentarily it is a good pass from Tanaka and Japan running the ball now with some purpose this is Imamura wide to a Suzuki and U Suzuki scores a fabulous try oh that's what John Kerwin's talking about the scrum did its job Moved to the right initially, and then they switched it to the left with real purpose. 